majority of the members um, present, I declare the uh, motion passed. Um, electronic health record sharing system bill. Enjoy. Committee stage. Council is now in committee. Members may refer to Appendix 3 to the script for the debate and voting arrangements for the bill. I'll first deal with clauses with no amendment. I now propose the question to you, and that is that the following clauses stand part of the Electronic Health Record Sharing System Bill. Clauses 1, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 13, 14, 15, 18, 24 to 34, 36, 39 to 42, 44, 45, 47, 48, 49, 51, 52, 54, 55, 56 and 59 to 62. Does any other member wish to speak? And I put the question to you, and that is that the clauses just mentioned stand part of the bill. Will those in favour please raise their hands? Those against, please raise their hands. I think the question is agreed by majority of the members present. I declare the motion passed. Clauses 2, 3, 10, 11, 17, 19 to 23, the heading of Division 4 of Part 3, clauses 35, 37, 38, 43, 46, 50, 53, 57 and 58. Secretary for Food and Health. Chairman. I move the amendments to clauses 2, 3, 10, 11, 17, 19 to 23, the heading of Division 4 of Part 3, clauses 37, 43, 46, 50, 53, 57 and 58, and the deletion of clauses 35 and 38. Details of the amendments have been sent to members. During the scrutiny, the Bills Committee has given a lot of uh, constructive and valuable input. The amendments are to respond to views expressed by members in the Bills Committee, stakeholders and also the Privacy Commissioner to clarify the bill. We've also introduced uh, some textual and technical and drafting um, amendments and I will explain them all now. In relation to uh, clauses 2, 1, in relation to interpretation, we propose uh, to change the definition of uh, healthcare um, by deleting in Hong Kong. This is to enable access of uh, healthcare under special circumstances uh, for patients to receive. Um, medical service outside Hong Kong and in relation to 19 and uh, 17 we have made um, consequential amendments. In relation to substitute decision makers, we propose that uh, for persons who live with the HCR and uh, people who accompany the HCR during that time can be the SDM uh, for the person. And in relation to suspension uh, of uh, registration of HCPs and HCRs, we propose that uh, the f uh, time frame will be set down to improve clarity. Currently, it will be no more than 28 days. It's just like, uh, well, if the EHR commissioner thinks fit, the period can be extended once for no more than 28 times. And in relation to 21 and 33, in relation to uh, cancellation of registration of HCP and HCR, we think that uh, prescribed HCR and HCP in relation to uh, cancellation of uh, registration by the commissioner, uh, a representation can be made before that. We propose to cancel um, 5G. This is... to uh, uh, the uh, remaining condition of registration. And in relation to Clause 20, that is uh, for government departments uh, to be registered as HCPs, um, it will be narrowed to government departments. And during registra registration and in the provision of health care,
similar conditions as set down in 11 and 17 uh, should be met. And in relation to HCPs, in relation to um, responsibility, we propose uh, to, cap to delete the provision to improve clarity. This will not affect 21E, 23-1E. In relation to 37 and 38, in relation to um, carrying out a functions and exercise of powers, inspection uh, of uh, information and also correction of uh, information, we propose to delete 37 bracket 2 and 38 to prohibit And uh, this is in relation to a uh, written uh, consent. This is uh, to align the practice with uh, 468. So in relation to uh, certain, uh, un under certain circumstances, under 50, that uh, the commissioner may require HCPs to produce a certain document. So we propose to expand the scope of the documents and record uh, so that the um, information under the control, the uh, Department of Health or the HA may also have to produce uh, such information. And in relation to the setting up of the um, research board of uh, EHR under 53, we propose to add new 2A to further elaborate that um, the secretary for FHB may uh, appoint no more than 10 members. And there will be additions a three 3A, 5A, and 5B to stipulate the uh, terms, reappointment, um, cancellation of appointment, etc. In relation to provisions related to restrictions on liability of public offices under 57, we propose uh, to change subclause 1, that is, uh, to uh, to change to uh, will not attract any civil liabilities to clarify the liability. We also propose to delete uh, bracket 2 to avoid misunderstanding. This states that um, the e -com EHR commissioner has a no obligation to inspect the relevant uh, system to ensure compliant or uh, record accuracy. In relation to uh, clause 58, that is protection of public officers, we propose to amend 3B so that uh, employees of uh, HAs or um, body corporates appointed under CAP 1135N uh, and their employees to replace persons appointed by the commissioner under 48.3 to narrow the scope of a protected person under 58. In relation to textual, technical, or drafting amendments, they include clause 2.1, that is, immediate family members uh, will be revised to family member. It's only re in relation to the English version. So that will be closer to the Chinese rendition. And 46 bracket 8 and 9 healthcare services will be amended to healthcare services. The word healthcare will be separated to clarify that it, ha it carries a similar meaning to the PDPO uh, sections uh, 35B and 35I. Uh, the committee does not object to the amendments. I hope members will support the uh, amendment. Thank you. Does any member wish to speak? Ms. Sitho. Thank you. In relation to the definition of family members, I would like to speak. So when it comes to this uh, term, family members, uh, there are two amendments. <laughs> Firstly, uh, 2.1, uh, uh, immediate family members will now read family members. So in other words, the um, uh, word immediate is deleted. And then another amendment 
um, as in 3, 2, D. In fact, we um, proposed the amendment in the Bills Committee. Uh, and uh, the the um, uh, substitute decision maker under this amendment will be a family member of the healthcare recipient or a person residing with the healthcare recipient. In fact, um, in the bills committee, we uh, had in mind. Um, a same sex um partner um living uh with um the person how many um uh, homosexuals have told us that uh maybe um uh, two persons may have been um same sex partners for decades but then in the um uh, in the um medical treatment process, the partner can't make any decision um, for um, the patient. Say if the patient is in a coma, that then the same-sex um, partner um, uh, cannot um, uh, make any decision on behalf of the partner. And so we have um, the relationship by blood, adoption, and so on and so forth. And... Um, now we have the um, definition um, expanded to cover a person residing with the healthcare recipient. So in other words, um, this person resides with the healthcare recipient, and this person uh, accompanies the healthcare recipient um, in uh, in the course of treatment. We are glad that this amendment has been accepted. In fact, in 2012, um, Dr. Cole um, came to LegCo to um, attend a meeting of the subcommittee on um, 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 persons with um, sexual orientation. Dr. Cole was um, the hospital authority representative at that time, and I can remember um, that um, at the subcommittee, he, he, made, he made remarks which were friendly to homosexuals. He said that uh, when, um, uh, uh, in fact, he said that um, uh, when, uh, um, for homosexuals who uh, were discriminated against and as a result they felt depressed um, they, and they suffer from depression, then they should seek treatment. And they, um, so, um, what if um, for a, a healthcare recipient, uh, he has two family members, one says um, decision A should be adopted and the other says um, decision B would be um, preferred. And may I refer to para 38 of the Bills Committee um, report. It is said that um, when there are disputes among the immediate family members of the healthcare recipient, they could take their time to discuss among themselves and resolve such disputes. And then um, um, as a last resort, maybe the doctor would make a decision. But then uh, this bill doesn't tell us um, uh, um, who has precedence um, in case um, uh, family members have disputes um, and um, uh, the marriage ordinance uh, establishes the um, uh, uh, the relationship um, of a um, um, heterosexual marriage, and then um, then what about um, um, homosexual um, partners or couples? And, and um, can the uh, the um, uh, can the partner be given statutory status to make decisions on behalf of um, the uh, the other partner uh, for medical treatment? Does any other member wish to speak? Um, Secretary, do you wish to speak again? I now. Put a question to you, and that is that the amendments moved by the secretary be passed. Will those in favour please raise their hands? Those against?
I think the question is agreed by a majority of the members present. I declare the amendment passed. As the amendments to delete clauses 35 and 38 have been passed by the committee, clauses 35 and 38 are deleted from the bill. Clauses 310. 11, 17, 19 to 23, the heading of Division 4 of Part 3, clauses 37, 43, 46, 50, 53, 57 and 58 as amended. I now put a question to you and that is that clauses 3, 10, 11, 17, 19 to 23, the heading of Division 4 of Part 3, clauses 37, 43, 46, 50, 53, 57 and 58 as amended stand part of the bill. Will those in favour please raise their hands? Those against? I think the question is agreed by a majority of the members present. I declare the motion passed. Clauses 7, 12 and 16. Dr. Long Kalau has given notice to move the amendments to clauses 2, 7 and 12 and the deletion of clause 16. Members may now proceed to a joint debate on the relevant part of clause 2, the original clauses 7, 12 and 16 and Dr. Long Kalau's amendments. Dr. Long, you may now move your amendments. Uh, but uh, uh, Chairman, I want a quorum count. I want a quorum count.
。梁家楼议员，请你动议你嘅修正案。多谢梁家楼 ，please move move， 诶、uh, ，please move your amendment。I move to、um, amend two seven and deletion of sixteen. Chairman, well,、um, I've heard from、uh, some fellow members that、uh, I'm. Well, I'm sorry, I will not、uh, able to support you. But I said, never mind. Just come to listen to me. I propose these amendments for the benefit of. Patients. One day you will be using this system as a patient, so please consider my amendments. When it comes to the e-health record, it's a very good thing. The HA has been using、uh, an e-health. Record sharing system for many years, and there are a lot of merits. I'm not going to、uh, go into details. In recent years,、uh, there are developments for、uh, two-way interaction. Say, for example,、uh, checkups. Information in private hospitals can be uploaded onto the platform. So you see that、uh, development of the sharing system and Uh, the system and the sharing itself don't need legislation. So, a new bill will enable sharing because、uh, it will be better than the existing situation, and at the same time, it will strengthen protection on privacy of patients. And as to how the how the law can improve protection. It's in real.、Uh, I think、uh, there are some problems with the consent arrangement. First, let me explain about the current consent arrangement before I explain about my amendments. A sharing platform. What purpose does it serve? What objective does it have? It's very simple. All HCPs. Uh, private hospitals, public hospitals, doctors will upload the health record of patients onto the platform. Then, when a patient goes to see a doctor, whether it's a private hospital, public hospital, clinic, the patient will give a consent of the specific HCP. Say the doctor, then the doctor can go to the platform to view all the information available there. That is the basic aspect of the sharing system. So, what is the current? What is the law? The administration has made an interesting, not amendment, but arrangement to the one that I've just described. There are two tiers of consent. For the doctor to see the information on the platform, the first tier consent is called a joining consent. The second tier consent is called a sharing consent. However, these two consents are written in three places in the bill: seven, twelve, and sixteen. These three clauses. Clause seventeen is about the first consent, joining consent. What is it about? It's about allowing. The EHR commissioner to upload the information in the hands of、uh, healthcare providers onto the platform, so that. Cons、uh, those HCPs that could get con consent can view them. Sorry, I have to explain again.、Uh, the joining consent is、uh, allow the data of a certain person to be uploaded and for some other HCPs to view the information. However, this has to be viewed together with sixteen. What is sixteen about? 
sixteen is that for HA they don't need a sharing consent. They only need a uh, adjoining consent for the information to be uploaded and downloaded. So in effect, after giving adjoining consent, that is the first consent you give, the HA and the D of H can upload the health data they have and view all patient record on the platform. So the uploading and downloading access have been bundled by the joining consent. When it comes to the second consent, that is the sharing consent. Sharing consent allows doctors who have obtained the consent to upload the information he has and view the information on the platform. So we have two types of consent. And through these three sections, in effect, it means that uh, joining consent is for public sector to upload and download data. Sharing consent is for private doctors and hospital to upload and download information. So what is the problem? Say, well, I can give you at least three scenarios first. Some patients they've been seeing a doctor in the pri in a public sector, and they have some special conditions that they don't want uh, to be shared with uh, private uh, sectors as uh, in the public sector. Of course, uh, the patient would like to the private doctor to. Uh, get the information available in the public hospital. So the patient needs to give a sharing consent to the private sector, but to the private doctor. However, by giving this sharing consent, the public hospital will have access to the information that the patient does not want the public hospital to know in the first place. That yeah, the other way around now. There's a patient. Yeah, who's been seeing a doctor in a public hospital where well, you have to wait for, say, for example, for a CAT scan, the waiting time is very long. So the patient decides to have the test done in a private hospital. And of course, he would want the public hospital to see the information in the private hospital. The current arrangement is for the patient uh, to give the sharing consent to the private hospital, but the hos but the patient only wants the public hospital to see the information in the private hospital and not the other way around, and that is not that cannot be done under the bill. And the secretary said that the amendment, my amendment, will undermine the uh, the policy. Intent. I said it would strengthen it, but the doc but uh, the secretary said it would undermine it. Why is there a stark difference? The opposite. Well, how can this system functions best? Is it because uh, well, is it in the case when there is as much information as possible that when both public and private hospital upload all the information onto the platform under the original bill? When a joining consent is given, public hospital will upload the information there, not private ones. But if you want private hospital to upload the information, say if you've given, you have seen three private hospitals, you have to give sharing consent to these three private hospitals. My amendment is that once you have given the joining consent, then all information in private and public hospital will be made available unless otherwise specified. So there is a choice. So once you've given the joining consent, whether it is information in the private hospital, public hospital, and the clinic, the information of the patient will be uploaded onto the into the system. And this will be uh, more effective than the proposal of the amendment. I also 
amend the second tier consent, the sharing consent. That is whether you go to private or public hospital, you will have to give a sharing consent. Uh, there is a time period, maybe one year or longer than that. At least you will have to have the patient giving the sharing consent to the HCP so that the HCP can view the information on the platform. And this will mean greater protection for the privacy of the patients as um Mr. Albert Ho has pointed out um, what is most important is that the system should be uh, patient based and patient centered. I still have some time left. I want to say that um, there are arrangements concerning um, um, healthcare providers are being referred. I say we have a patient here and another doctor. Now this patient has given me um, um, a sharing consent. I'm a doctor, and so under the uh, arrangements, if I refer this patient to this doctor, and this doctor can uh, automatically um, see your records, but then. In referring you, the patient, to him, I don't need your consent. So in other words, if a patient has given a sharing consent to a doctor or to someone, then that doctor can refer the patient to um, any person and uh, any person can um, uh, have access to your information. Uh, it is said that um, uh, privacy protection under this bill will not be less than the um, protection under the personal data privacy ordinance. But then, after the because the patient um, has signed to give consent, how can uh, um, the personal data privacy ordinance protect him? Because um, the patient has um, given has signed to give consent. So how can the personal data privacy ordinance still protect the privacy of um, the patient? So I've um, spent 13 minutes to try to explain to members why the bill can't protect patients' um, um, privacy. And as patients, do fellow members um, trust the um, administration's proposals and arrangements? Uh, I'm not filibustering. I'm not trying to filibuster. So um, that's all for the time being. Does any other member wish to speak? Mr. Joseph Lee. Um, Chairman, uh, I do not intend to filibuster either. I have very diligently um, studied the um, President's ruling, um, Dr. Leung's um, CSAs and the administration's position. So uh, um, the patient gives a joining consent and then um, a sharing consent and then um, his um, patient records can be uh, read by um, the public sector and the private sector. Now, um, uh, according to the administration, if uh, Dr. Leung's amendment is passed, then um, the government will have to incur extra, extra expenditure on um, um, redeveloping the system. So, um, I want to say that um, uh, for members who um, um, uh, are not members of the bills committee. Um, you may um, not understand what we're talking about. Uh, say pressing a button, whether people will um, um, uh, can read, uh, have access to all your information. Now, I want to say that I do not agree with uh, Doctor Long, but I think the administration has given a really a very lame reply. Uh, administration uh, merely says that there will be extra expenditure incurred if Doctor Long's um, amendment is passed. But um, I think the principles are more important than 
um, 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 the the need for the administration to um, spend more money. I, I, if, in my view, um, the administration's proposal is okay. Uh, Doctor Leung's um, um, amendment um, will only um, um, make things more complicated. Um, so, and um, um, Mr. Leung, I, I, I want to filibuster, but not on this occasion. Um, I hope that we can. Um, Vote as soon as possible. Mr. Charles Smock. Um, Chairman, concerning the um, EHR sharing system, um, it deals with um, the provision of information and uh, the um, obtaining of information. Now, concerning the uh, PPIEPR, yeah. Uh, it's one way. Um, it um, uh, only enables um, um, healthcare providers to read information. So, uh, or rather, you you can't write. It's a one way um, program. So um, I think a very important concept behind this uh, presence, uh, this proposed system, is to uh, um, bundle the um, providing function and the obtaining function. The hospital authority um, holds um, the largest amount of patient information and um, health records. So some mem uh, some members of the public may um, want to join the system, but they may w not want um, the public sector to have access to um, the information. And I'm um, concerned that the um, usage rate of the system will ultimately be diminished. And uh, I always think that privacy of uh, between privacy and convenience, you have to strike the right balance. Um, and and, uh, and if you um uh, try to explain um, this delicate balance. The uh, the public may feel very baffled, and may, they may decide not to join the system. They may think they uh, want more time to consider the matter, and that will delay the um, um, the benefits that um, can uh, be achieved through the launching of the system. Now, Mr. Uh, Joseph Lee said that the administration's um, um, Justification um, for opposing Dr. Leung's amendment um, is uh, very lame. But then I, I want to say that um, if the, Dr. Leung's amendment is passed, then the system has to be changed because at the moment the system doesn't um, contain this function. Now, before I develop um, a computer system, I um, get all the specifications, and then I develop the system, and then the um, uh, legislation is drawn up on the basis of the scope of the system. And if we do things the other way around, then um, there will be problems. For example, well, what specifications should there be? And uh, it definitely takes time and money to um, change the functions. And we, as a result, we will not be able to uh, commission the um, um, system um, at the end of this year or early next year. And, and also, um, this um, concept w uh, was um, not um, covered in the first round of um, consultation. And so if we adopt this suggestion after discussion in this council, then uh, some stakeholders um, may, may have certain uh, comments, some may object to um, um, the um, idea, and 
we I think we all want to see the system launched as early as possible, and so uh, I want to say that I have reservations um, about um, this um, suggestion by Dr. Le. So I will not support the amendment, Ms. Sitho. Yes, Chairman. Um, in fact, uh, during the second uh, resumption of second reading debate, um, uh, I said that. Um, I um, support Dr. Lang's uh, proposal from the point of view of um, protecting the privacy of the patient. The patient uh, may want to disclose certain information, but not all the information. Of course, the healthcare providers, the doctors want to know all the information because such information will help them um, prescribe the right drugs and come up with the uh, uh, most suitable treatment plan. At the end of the day, Health the, uh, belongs to the patient, and it is for the healthcare recipient to make a final choice. The framework provided by the administration, Chairman, you may help me in the translation. All it's all or nothing. I you put down your name, I do put down your name, and everything is open. Uh, you will enjoy the benefits. Of the um, EHR sharing system, but after you put down your name, then uh, to give the consent, then the things you don't want others to know will also be exposed. So in the first phase, um, this framework is just all or none. If you give the consent, then everything will be open. That may not be the wish of every patient. In order to protect that small part of privacy, the patient may choose not to use this platform. Just now, in the uh, second reading resumption debate, Mr. Albert Ho said that uh, your information is open to the institutions, but the institutions should have the professional integrity, uh, not. To look into the unnecessary um, information, and um, and they will of course not expose everything to others. But if you have not seen it, how do you know whether it is necessary or not? You have to see everything before you can decide whether certain information is irrelevant to the present um, treatment. And it is also possible. It is also possible that uh, some uh, uh, sees that it is the, the patient is a celebrity, and that explains why Mr. Ho has a reservation. He he uh, referred to uh, celebrities. Uh, some uh, people may be interested, uh, may maybe uh, may be interested in the. Uh, the secrets of uh, the uh, pop stars or other public uh, figures. Now the professions uh, have to uphold their own integrity and professional ethics, so as not to expose the secrets of other people. But there is still the chance of uh, such information, uh, secret information, being disclosed. You better leave the decision to the HCR. The recipient, and the HCR uh, should be uh, given a decision as to whom the information uh, should be given. Same may be it is for the doctor treating the patient um, to have so access instead of uh, making the information available to all the uh, H healthcare providers. Within the institution, uh, we support the concept of Doctor Alan Kalau, but because of the uh, technical aspect, um, since the system has been developed, but the system has not um, included uh, giving the patients the choice. We find it um, regrettable that we cannot support Mr. Uh, Doctor Alan Kalau's amendment. But you can see that from my speech, we support your concept or your idea. I think the question is technical. It's about the timing. 
I therefore ask the administration to do this. I think there is an amendment to uh, clause 16. Uh, flexibility is given to the HCRs that in the future um, uh, certain restrictions can be imposed on access to information or uh, obtain uh, the the, the, um, um, the access to information. So I hope that in the uh, next uh, phase, the choice of the HCR should be incorporated in the computer system. Next, Mr. Chen Hang Pan. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Dr. Leung gave an, uh, an example. Say, a, a doctor was able to obtain the information of a patient and then refer the patient to another healthcare. Um, institution or a testing laboratory, then uh, the institution can also um, look into the information. It is very scary, but you remember that you may remember that there is 35A, which has just been amended. There's a provision. Say, if a doctor refer has referred a certain patient to an institution to receive X-ray. And then the institution, the ex, uh, the radiographer may not need, uh, is not required to obtain the information. Now uh, there is, it is very scary that uh, endless referrals will lead to uh, full disclosure of information to everybody. But this loophole has been plugged. I've also noticed uh, this uh, during the uh, study of the bill, and also during today's speeches. Many have asked uh, whether the patient uh, has the control as to the release of information to the doctor. In fact, under 16A and B, the administration has also added provisions that in the second phase uh, and the first year of um, the use of platform, um, something will be done. In the first phase, uh, there is no uh, such arrangement. If um, Dr. Leung's amendment is passed today, then the whole EHR system uh, cannot start. The sharing of information will be um, aborted. We want the early implementation of the system to help the patients as ASAP. But if there is any unnecessary delay, there will be additional cost and additional manpower resources. And that is not what people want to see. I think um, Dr. Lau's, uh, Dr. Leung's concern, in fact, has been addressed. We uh, did discuss the issue of the so called safe deposit box. Um, analogy. Uh, the patient can control how many doctors can have access to the information. Um, that was discussed at the bills committee meetings, and the administration uh, has agreed that it will start um, such work in the second phase, uh, at the start of such second phase. If we uh, pass Dr. Leung's amendment, then we cannot. I have a system up and running. We've spent more than a year on studying the bill, and in fact, uh, phase one sharing uh, is ready. Um, the um, secretary will deal with uh, the uh, question in the second phase. We agree that we should protect the rights of patients or the privacy of patients, but we cannot accept Dr. Leung's amendment. The DAB will oppose Dr. Leung's amendment. Dr. Leung Kalao. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I fully respect the views of members, but I want to give some short replies. Mr. Chang Hang Pan, if I refer you to take an X ray, the radiographer needs to know he reads everything about you, and you cannot challenge him. It's very simple. I want to read everything before I can make a diagnosis. Say, for example, I give you this book, Mr. Chan. Please read this book. 
They only read those you need to know. You have to read the whole book before you know uh, which part you need to know. That is a trick. That is a trick, uh, uh, Mr. Charles Mock. If I haven't misheard you, uh, you are afraid that um, the breaking up of uploading and downloading uh, will deter the private practitioners from uploading the information. Let me clarify this. Uploading and downloading are the rights. They are not obligations. Even if you bundle them together, uh, even if he downloads certain information for reading, it doesn't mean that he will upload the information. It's a right. It's different from an obligation. What they bundled together uh, is the right, not the obligation. Mr. Mok also said that if the HA is not allowed to have uh, an automatic sharing consent, then it will reduce the incentive for patients to participate. I don't understand because my proposed amendment is that after giving a joining consent, whether it is private or public, they can upload the information onto the platform. And there is a third scenario that I did not mention. Say uh, for a lot of you, uh, you may not have you may never have been to a public hospital, but you may have been to different private hospitals, A and B. And if you've never been to a public hospital, there is no incentive for you to participate in the system to allow the public hospital to have access to the information help in private hospitals. Without joining, the information uh, between hospitals A and B cannot be shared. But under my proposal, then they can be shared because whether it is public or private hospital, everyone can share the information on the platform. And patients will be uh, will feel incentivized to join. And as to whether too many changes will discourage members of the public from joining, well, my Amendments are more simple, a simpler. Step one, upload all the information. Step two, you need consent of the patient before you can view the information. That's simple. The original proposal under the bill by the administration is that uh, well, clause seven will have to be read together with clause sixteen before you understand what is going on, and the clause twelve is to bundle uh, the two consents together. And the last point. That uh, that is not the design, not the design of the system. Then uh, it will be postponed. Well, uh, my personal computer at home has this design, and it will take only several days to change it. I don't know anything about the huge system to be maintained by the by the administration. I said at the outset one thing: the current HA system has been running for many years. And it's been running well. The new system can't possibly replace the HA system in a short time. So if you say a later uh, launch time, to be honest, there is no urgency because there is already a system that has been running well. The administration said that they, in principle, oppose to my amendment. That means in the future, sixteen when sixteen A comes into effect, that is, the patient is allowed to impose restrictions on the scope of sharing. The government may not even consider that. That's all I want to say in re in reply. Thank you. Does any other member wish to speak? Secretary for Food and Health. In the resumption of the second reading, I explained that in principle the administration opposed to Mr. Lau's amendment because it seriously uh, undermined 
uh, the policy intent of uh, two-way sharing between public and uh, private HCPs. And this has completely changed the basic design principle and uh, consent arrangement that has been uh, agreed upon. And thirdly, that means uh, in the first stage, the sharing system will not be able to function, and I will elaborate. After developing and designing for five years, our team has already finished the first stage of the sharing system. And there are two tiers of consent. First, all patients, including those under the HA and D of H, can decide whether to give adjoining consent. And those who have already joined, that is HCRs, can selectively give sharing consent to individual HCPs so that they can access and upload the e-health record. As for Mr. Lau's, um, Dr. Lau's amendment, in general, it will bring the following direct implication. First, in relation to access, that is um, uh, access and uploading, the, the consent will be separated. So the joining consent will be redefined as uh, HCRs, that is patients, allowing HCPs to upload the information. And after amending Clause 12, the sharing consent will be redefined as allowing HCPs to access information available. Secondly, well, this is in relation to the consent arrangements given to HA and D of H. Deleting Clause 16 will mean that um, a joining consent will not become a sharing consent given to the HA and the D of H. In relation to a letter sent to the Bills Committee uh, in May um, this year, and uh, what he said, uh, Mr. Lau, Dr. Lau's concern may be that um, patients who may only want uh, the HCP to access health record kept by the HA or the D of H, but not want the um, um, information to be accessible to the D of H of HA, or um, patients do not want the private HCPs to access information kept by the HA or the D of H. So um, all these scenarios involve just one-way access. As I've explained, the sharing system is a platform set up with public funds. The fundamental objective is to promote sharing on both uh, two-way sharing between private and public HCPs. So we think that the sharing uh, consent should cover access and uploading. This will be more in line with our policy objective and its a reasonable arrangement. As I said, that during the consultation is been agreed upon. Currently, there is a pilot uh, scheme that is uh, being implemented, and that is a one-way. Um, that is a one-way sharing system to test the uh, effectiveness of um, of the of the sharing system. And the future uh, two-way sharing system will enable HCPs uh, to have access of um, useful information, and at the same time, they can upload information and make contribution to enrich the uh, EVE health record of patients. Compared to a one-way pilot scheme, the two-way sharing system will uh, bring bet bigger benefit. If the sharing uh, consent is uh, split up, and then it will uh, turn the system into a one-way uh, shift system. But in relation to the deletion of uh, Clause 16, as we've explained, that uh, H D of H and the HA has got the largest amount of uh, HCPs, and they have a huge amount of um, health records. And this will be important information uh, that it will be crucial to the uh, system. Without the information, the e-health record um, may be may not be very effective, and the benefits brought by the sharing system will be seriously undermined. Currently, the developed sharing system has been incorporated into the overall consent arrangement, and this arrangement has already been discussed and consulted um, by the advisory and steering committee and working groups. 
These groups and committees comprises uh, state representatives of different stakeholders, including patient groups, uh, professional uh, medical uh, professional groups, uh, experts of individual discipline. And this has already been mentioned in Chapter 4 of the public consultation document um, launch in the public consultation launch in 2011 and 2012. In relation to international experience, in order to successfully launch a, a voluntary sharing system, it being simple and easy to use is very important to a lot of users. The current consent arrangement and the first stage sharing system is based on this. Well, the first stage sharing system has already been developed. It will meet the needs of uh, most of the participants. Having said that, we understand that some patients under certain circumstances may would, would like to uh, um, impose restrictions on what is to be shared. And in fact, uh, previously we have mentioned about uh, possible scenarios under the arrangement of a safe deposit box. Uh, after several discussions, uh, the administration has already undertaken that in the first year of the second stage of the launching, they will, in a positive way, um, uh, study uh, upon uh, choices by patients so that they will develop new functions for patients uh, to have more choices and they have already uh, uh, and we've already agreed that uh, before we launch the new functions we will um, consult stakeholders we will pro we have already prepared a CSA in relation to sharing restrictions to provide legal basis to impose uh, the sharing scope this arrangement has been accepted by the Bills Committee in a meeting on the 26th of uh, February 2015. So I would like to point out again that the administration's um, CSAs have provided a lot of flexible room um, to um, um, provide for different restriction scenarios in the future, including the um, scenario that um, Dr. Leung uh, has in mind. So we don't think uh, further amendments are required for um, the uh, present clauses 7, 12, and 16. Uh, these together with other clauses are an integral, uh, and, uh, they are, uh, they, um, uh, um, integ uh, they are, uh, they act as a whole, and uh, they can uh, uh, make sure that uh, um, stage one or phase one can operate smoothly. If we adopt Dr. Leung's amendment, that even if the bill is passed, we cannot come, uh, we cannot commission the um, developed system. We'll have to um, incorporate the new requirements in uh, Dr. Leung's amendment. We'll have to design and develop most of the features and functions of the system. For example, patient registration and the uh, consent function, and so on and so forth. We'll also have to um, uh, make um, substantial revisions to the uh, workflow, application, um, interface, sharing features, and so on and so forth. And there will have to be a lot of new tests. That would mean that we'll have to incur extra development and expenditure and the uh, work process will also have to be revised substantially and also uh, as the sharing system is a um, complicated and sophisticated system involving the sharing of sensitive um, patient records, um, there are a lot of um, um, built-in security features and privacy um, control features which are extremely stringent and vigorous. And if we are to um, make um, um, large numbers of technical uh, revisions and amendments, then we will have to carry out a um, very detailed review concerning the security features, privacy um, features, the, and also the overall framework, and also of the, all the various specifications. And um, as a result, um, we will also need to um, carry out a security impact assessment again, and we'll have to uh, carry out another um, privacy impact assessment. And uh, so if the amendment is passed, we'll need at least uh, 24 extra months and also extra um, uh, expenditure and extra manpower resources. And there will be a lot of negative impact on um, patients. So there will be a serious delay and also um, the amendment will seriously jeopardize the policy objective of um, public-private sector sharing of information. And so, uh, in fact, um, members of the Bills Committee have decided not to move the CSA in the name of the Bills Committee. So you can see that, in fact, the, the amendment has not been supported. And also for... Um, 
um, um, information um, 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 uh, that can be obtained by um, referred um, uh, healthcare providers. In fact, um, this is subject to the restrictions with regard to uh, information that can be accessed by the provider. So uh, may I uh, appeal to members to oppose um, the um, uh, Mr. Long's amendment and to um, support the original clauses 7, 12, and 16. Dr. Long, do you wish to respond? And I'll put a question to you, and that is that, that, that Dr. Lau, uh, Long, Dr. Long Lau's amendments be passed. For those in favor, please raise their hands. Those against? I think the question is not agreed by a majority, respectively, of each of the two groups of members who are present. I declare the amendments negatived. Clause 2 as amended. As the amendments to Clause 2 moved by the Secretary have been passed by the Committee earlier, I now put the question to you, and that is that Clause 2 as amended stand part of the bill. Will those in favour please raise their hands? Those against? I think the question is agreed by a majority of the members present. I declare the motion passed. And I'll put a question to you, and that is that clauses 7, 12, and 16 stand part of the bill. Will those in favor please raise their hands? Those against? I think the question is agreed by a majority of the members present. I declare the motion passed. New division heading before new clause 16A, division 3A, sharing restriction. New clause 16A, request for sharing restriction. New clause 16B, commission, commissioner to specify sharing restriction. New clause 35A, prescribed health care providers duties to restrict access to health data. Secretary for Food and Health. Chairman, I move the second reading of the new division heading and new clauses read out just now. The content of the amendments uh, is in the paper circularized to members. Now, in fact, um, the two um, new provisions relate to uh, privacy matters. The first um, is the um, sharing restriction, and we propose to add um, 3A um, concerning sharing restriction, and there will be a new uh, clause 16A and 16B um, providing for sharing uh, request for sharing restriction and commissioners to specify sharing restriction and concerning to one um, a request for sharing restriction there is a new definition and for 3e 5g and 5h these are consequential amendments as I stated in the resumption of second reading debate, the Bills Committee uh, had um, a very detailed discussion on whether the safe deposit box feature should be um, provided under the um, sharing system. And in the light of the concerns uh, raised by the Privacy Commission and the Bills Committee, we promised that um, in the first year of um, Phase 2, uh, we will be um, carrying out research um, along um, um, this direction so that we can um, develop and um, implement the new function or objective um, under a certain format. And as a result, patients will have more choice concerning disclosure of information. The Bills Committee welcomes um, uh, the decision to carry out some research. And um, I believe members to understand that without um, or before we have the outcome of the study or the research, we can't include the security uh, or the safe deposit box feature in any concrete form in the bill. And so we have already um, um, proposed in the bill, in the light of uh, suggestions from members and the Privacy Commissioner, that um, we um, do um, uh, respect the spirit of providing members of more choice concerning sharing of information, and at the same time, that will not, we will not be preempting the um, uh, future provisions to provide for the function. And that's why we have um, made these or proposed these new clauses. And um, in the light of Dr. Leung's concern, we will, um, at the beginning of um, 16A1, at um, um, despite the, uh, or um, notwithstanding um, the requirements under clauses 12 and 16, so uh, we are trying to very clear clearly um, 
state that um, these um, um, new provisions in the future will um, have um, legal effect. And the second issue uh, relates to the need to know um, principle. And we're proposing um, in parts three of um, Part 3, Division 4, a new 35A prescribed health care provider's duties to restrict access to health data. And in fact, we did explain to members of the Bills Committee that um, the need to know principle um, would be adopted in the um, sharing system. And uh, in the light of uh, concerns from members and the Privacy Commissioner, we have included this uh, new clause 35A to better reflect the need to know principle. Um, the uh, provision stipulates that uh, healthcare recipients have to give um, sharing consent to healthcare providers, and healthcare providers have the responsibility to adopt reasonable procedures. Um, and the um, uh, obtaining of the information and the provision of the information. And in the light of the Privacy Commissioner's uh, suggestion, we further propose that under 35A bracket 3, um, we have to further fulfill the requirements under Part 5 of the Privacy Ordinance concerning inspection of information or request to correct information. And so, um, um, if um, healthcare um, workers uh, or those that um, apart from healthcare workers have to uh, take action to comply with these provisions, they should not be regarded as having breached the provisions. And I understand that the Bills Committee has no objection to these uh, amendments. I now propose the question to you, and that is that the new division heading before new clause 16A and new clauses 16A, 16B, and 35A be read a second time. Does any member wish to speak? Well, you enjoy. I now propose um, the question to you, and that is that the new division heading before new clause 16A and new clause 16A, 16B, and 35A be read the second time. Uh, with those in favour, please raise their hands. Those against? I think the question is agreed by majority of the members present. I declare the motion passed. New division heading before new clause 16A and new clauses 16A, 16B, and 35A. Secretary for Food and Health. Chairman, I move that the new division heading and new clauses read out just now be added to the bill. I now propose a question to you, and that is that the new division heading before new clause 16A and new clauses 16A, 16B, and 35A be added to the bill. I now put a question to you as stated. With those in favour, please raise their hands. Those against? I think the question is agreed by majority of the members present. I declare the motion passed. Scheduled. Does any member wish to speak? I now put a question to you, and that is that the scheduled stand part of the bill. With those in favour, please raise their hands. Those against? I think the question is agreed by a majority of the members present. I declare the motion passed. Council now resumes. Third reading. Electronic health record share.